The first thing I want to note here is a few variable changes here. So in the problem, they give you the friction force as that. So the kinetic friction force is F sub K. Uh, but I'm going to write it down here as force sub friction kinetic. Okay. So they also give in the problem N for normal force. But for here, I'm going to just say force sub N. And for tension, they just give it as a big T. But for here, I'm just going to write it as F sub T. Now, generally, this uh, notation is, to me is a little bit better because it specifies the force and then it delineates between the different types of forces. So this is the notation I'm going to use for the problem, which uses this notation. Um, secondly, uh, we'll see that the blocks move only in two ways. So we have a pulley and we have two items that are hooked together like this. So there's only one, uh, two ways to move. Both can move in this direction or both can move in this direction. We'll say the net natural order of things, which is to move in this direction, is a positive motion. So we'll say to the right and down is positive, not up. So it's a little bit aside from convention due to the nature of the problem. Um, secondly, let's go ahead and answer the question. So find the acceleration of the blocks in terms of MA and MB. And they want it only in terms of MA and MB. Let's go ahead and do that by writing out Newton's second law. So we have the sum of all forces in the x direction, and that is actually only for block A since block B is not gonna go side by side. So that's gonna equal to mass of block A times the acceleration of block A. And then the sum of all forces uh, in the y direction for only block B, because block A is not gonna go up or down, is equal to mass of block B times the acceleration of block B. Now, don't get me wrong, there is going to be a force equation for block A going up and down. That's how actually how we're going to solve some of this problem. But for, for now, let's just look at the obvious where we know that uh, there's going to actually be motion. And then we'll use other equations as we see fit later on. So um, first thing we want to know is that when block A moves, block B is going to move. And there's absolutely no way unless you push block A that block B is going to move differently from block A. I mean, yes, it's going to go up and down and block A is going to go side to side, but the acceleration and the actual velocity scalar is going to be um, uh, the same number. So the scalar version of velocity and acceleration is going to be the exact same number. So that being said, we can say that the acceleration of block A is the acceleration of block B. It's the same. And we're going to just call that acceleration for simplicity. Second thing to know is that this is one rope. So the tension that's felt by block A due to the rope has to be the same as the tension felt by block B due to the rope. So this is another assumption that you need to use or you need to make for anything connected by a perfect rope that's not elastic or you know, there's no impurities in, in, in the structure of the rope, okay? So it, it's perfectly stiff and, and it perfectly transfers forces at infinite speeds. So the force of tension of block A is going to equal to the force of tension of block B, and that's just going to equal to the force of tension, okay? So let's go ahead and write out the X and Ys, and then we'll see where we can go from there. So given, given what we have here, the forces in the X direction of block A are two, tension and friction. So we'll say the force of tension uh, which is just going to be force of tension for both blocks equally, so it doesn't matter, minus the force of friction kinetic is going to equal to the mass of block A times just the universal acceleration. Um, we're going to also say, uh, we're going to go ahead and delineate this a little bit more and break it down. So F of T Minus, now the force of friction equation is just going to be mu F of normal for block A. And that's going to equal to mass of block A times the acceleration. This is the friction equation 
uh, for both static and kinetic, but we're gonna go ahead and specify that this is a kinetic mu. And then we have normal force. Um, let's go ahead and look at block B just so we can get that out of the way. Maybe we can progress a little there. Uh, the Y direction of block B, there's two forces acting on it. The gravitational force is gonna be positive in this case, since it's going down and we've defined that as positive, and tension is gonna be negative. So we're gonna now say that force of gravity of block B minus the force of tension is equal to the mass of block B times that universal A. Let's go ahead and break it down a little bit. And uh, we see that the force of gravity in any case is just gonna be M times G specified for block B minus the force of tension. And that's gonna equal to M sub B times A. Let's go look at what we know and what we don't know. Eventually we need to find acceleration. So we're gonna go ahead and box it here for two equations. We know what the M's are because we wanna get A in terms of the M's. Um, but we don't know what this is. We can assume that we know what this, what we know what uh, mu is because that's based on the properties of both the um, the block and the and the and the uh, table. So we can say that we know it just kind of assumably, even though they don't explicitly give it to us. This is just a property of the system, and it has nothing to do with the situation. So we can assume it's easily find out. Uh, you can easily find this out. Um, we don't directly know what this is either, so that's the problem. We know what this is, we know what this is. So we have two equations and we have, it looks like two, two unknowns plus another unknown, so three unknowns. A's are what we need to find. F of T's, we can equate them together eventually from these two equations. So two equations and two unknowns is perfectly fine. We can solve for everything there. The problem is this third unknown right there. So we're gonna to have to do a side quest. Find out what F of N is. This is actually where we're gonna um, look at the Y uh, Newton's second law for block A. So Newton's second law for block A in the Y direction is gonna to equal to the mass of block A times the acceleration Y, which is actually gonna be zero because it's not going up or down. So um, the two forces acting on block A up and down are going to be, um, well, since down is positive, we'll say it's a gravitational force of A minus normal force of A equals to zero. Perfect, we need to find normal force. So it looks like we can equate these two given the equation. And so the normal force of A is just the gravitational force of A, which we can invoke what we know about the gravitational force is just gonna be mass times gravity. Perfect, so we have a conclusion here. So let's go ahead and use that and plug it into here. So F of T minus mu K times now MA G from our side quest is equal to MA times A. And now we have two equations, two unknowns. That's really all we need. So let's go ahead and use uh, the rest of the space, say down here to finish off the problem. We're gonna equate FTs together so that we can uh, get rid of those and solve finally for A. So we have FT here equaling to MA times A plus mu K M A G. We have F T from this side equaling to M B G minus M B times A. Let's go ahead and equate these two. So we end up getting M A times A plus mu K times M A G equaling to M B G minus MBA. Let's go ahead and try to isolate A as much as possible. I'm gonna get this onto this side and put everything else onto the other side, the right side. So let's go ahead and put this MBA to the left side. We end up getting MA times A 
plus MB times A equaling to MB times G minus mu K MA times G. You see that? So now let's go ahead and consolidate the uh, two terms here by taking out the A and just adding MA and MB. Eventually, we're going to get the answer that A is equal to whatever is here on the right side. divided by MA plus MB as we take that on the other side to isolate A. And that's going to be our answer. So now we have the acceleration due to MA, MB, and things that we know. G we already know, and then mu K we assume that we already know based on the fact that um, this is a common uh, constant for any block, for, for a block on a table. And that's something that we can look up. So it's not situational and we can assume that we know it. 